Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for the VS300 LP AUI live demo. My name is Christy White and I'm going to go through a live demo of the AUI. So that's our advanced user interface, which we sometimes call the GUI. Uh, we'll focus on the presets, metering and logging, the audio backup options, the scheduler, and the Orban inside. We are going to focus specifically on the AUI, so if you're looking for more information on the VS series, then I'd recommend you check out our website and some other webinars that we've done. Also notice that there's a question pane to the side, so if you have any questions to row, uh, please type them in that box and at the end, if we have time, I'll answer those questions or I'll get back to you individually after the webinar is over. So without that, we'll get started. So this is the main page and the AUI is a web server built into the transmitter, so you need no special software, uh, just a connection to the internet to remotely access or locally access the AUI. Um, it has an RF spectrum analyzer, MPX spectrum, and other testing functions that we'll go through, logging, email notifications, and more. So let's go right to a live transmitter. So this is a VS300, which is operating out of our Quincy, Illinois office, and I'm controlling it remotely today uh, from Ottawa, Ontario, in Canada. So it gives you a little bit of an idea of the control that you have over the AUI. So at the top of the screen here, it'll give you your date and time, your set point, frequency. Now you'll notice that there's an HD exciter in this unit. So this is a, not a VS300 LP, it's just one of our VS300 models set up, but we'll still be able to see everything that you would see in a VS300 LP. So we'll just turn this on here. And you're going to notice on the bottom that some buttons went from red to yellow to green. Uh, red is bad, amber is an indication that there might be something wrong with your transmitter, and a green status or RF on is a good sign. So the first thing that we'll look at is you'll notice that we have a spectrum analyzer here. So we'll just bring this up larger. You can see the FCC mask here, and as it's turning on, this will flatten out, but you also have options, so you can change this to an MPX view. So now, I guess it doesn't want to change, just give me one second here, MPX, okay, all right, there we go. So now as this comes up, you would see the pilot and also RDS if we had it enabled. And there we go. So with that said, I'm actually going to go into and start from the menu here. This is our main menu, and the brain of the transmitter is really in these presets. So when we open this, it's going to tell us that we're on current settings, and any of the changes that we make right now will affect the functionality of the transmitter. So you set your output power, frequency, the mode, as I mentioned, this one has a uh, is an HD setup, but we're going to operate it in just FM mode today. Your main audio, so this one right now is actually playing a shoutcast stream, and I'll get into a little more detail on that later. You can enable SCAs, enable RDS, and then over here in your other settings, you this is where you would set up uh, backup audio. So if you had an audio delay or a modulation loss, what action do you want the transmitter to take? No action, inhibit, or change the preset. So we have this set to play a playlist, which we have set up on this transmitter. And again, we'll get into a little bit more detail on that, but this is where you set it up. This transmitter also does not have the optional or band and side card, but it does have an internal audio processor where you can set the hard limiter, AGC limiter, a two slope limiter, and a left and right limiter. So I just want to go back to RDS and we'll just enable this quickly. We'll enable the internal and just put test here in. So now if we save this, you're going to notice that it affects the operational state. We're going to hit OK. And now when we go back to 
our spectrum analyzer and MPX view, you're going to notice now that the RDS shows up. So I just thought that would be a neat thing to show you today. Now, the next is your system settings. So in here, this is where you would upgrade the software. We're on the latest version of software on this transmitter or reset. Now, if there is an upgrade to the software, you get a notification from Nautel through our Nautel Waves newsletter and what the new features are. And the upgrades are free. That's one thing to keep in mind. There's no additional cost for this AUI software. And these are our user accounts, so you can have three different people logged in at a time on the transmitter. And we'll just add a user just to show you the different abilities. So let's go AUI demo as our user. And now we can customize or create someone who's view only or give someone full control. This can be helpful if you want someone to be able to see what's going on but not to turn the power on and off. Okay, so, and next we have the user settings. So this is where you would set up your network, email configurations, notifications. So this is great because the transmitter can send you an email if something has gone wrong. So we'll just, uh, we can say we want to know when, for example, the forward power is high. You can add that and you can customize and select because you're probably not going to want an email every time there's an alarm, but it can show you when there are certain alarms going off. Now where these alarms show up is the next interesting point. So we'll go, this screen will always get you back to home. Now if we went to status, the so status is green, but if this was amber or red, we open this up we would see an alarm and the severity level. Now, right now there's no alarms, but if we go into the logs, we can actually see the history of alarms. So what's happened, what action has been taken, and the log manager will actually allow you to copy those logs and keep them for a later date, or you could send them to someone else, say you had a a contract engineer, or you wanted to send your logs to Nautel if you called in and were having an issue, it's going to be a really great troubleshooting tool. So there you can see, paste it into an Excel sheet. So we'll go back to our menu and our user settings. So we'll ignore the action settings, those are for HD, you can SNMP configurations are in here. Uh, you also, your spectrum mask, you can choose the type. We have the FCC one, which is the important one for LP. Uh, we also have an NTP server, which you can enable. And we also have the Nautel phone home here. So you can enable participation in phone home. And when you do that, the transmitter sends one-way data. So sends out from your transmitter to Nautel information and readings from your transmitter. You can also call sign, so this Quincy DS300 is what you see up here on the top welcome bar. It can be helpful for people that might have more than one station, so you always know which AUI you're logged into. And now the other great thing here is our meters. So along with the user accounts, you can save which meters you want to show up when you log in. So which ones are the most important or interest to you. So you can see the heat sink temperature, fan. Now if we just click here, if I was to click on the controller, I could add, I want to know what the battery voltage is. And it's going to add it to our meters bar here. Now the other great thing is if you click on this I, and you'll see the blue box is showing up. So every time there's a blue box, it's a refresh. So the transmitter is taking a new measurement. We get asked the question a lot if there's a way to track or keep this data. It's not storing this information anywhere. It's just taking real-time measurements. But it is another great troubleshooting tool for you to see what's going on at a glance in the controller or the exciter.
So we'll go back into our menu and we'll talk about the playlists and the streams that we saw in the preset setup. So in our streams here, we have various uh, shoutcast, icecast uh, streams being brought in. So you have to add the stream first and tell the transmitter to look for it before you can activate it as a secondary digital option on your transmitter. Now we also have the playlists. So here you'll see we have a few different playlists set up here and the available files on the USB. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add a new playlist to show you how easy it is just to pull the files over. So you just drag and drop and then you can move them around. You can also insert a jump so you can ask after this last song, jump to playlist one at, you know, at the top, at the bottom, in the middle, and it will now jump to the playlist one when it gets to the bottom of this one. Now another great thing is that you don't have to be at the site to add a new file. You can transmit a file to the transmitter, which will then still be stored on the USB stick or a hard drive, so you do need the room, but you can manage the files and browse. I don't actually have a, a lot of music on this computer, so we can't see very much, but if I select that and I ask it to upload, it's going to, you're going to see it's uploading that file now to the transmitter in real time. So we'll just give it a couple more seconds since it's going fast today. And now that song has been added and we can add it to our new playlist. Now the other great thing that you can do with the streams and the playlists is with the use of the scheduler, which is turned off right now, you can create a rule. I know lots of LPFM folks have talked to me about, uh, you know, in the downtime they might just uh, use a playlist. So every night from 11 p.m. to 5 in the morning, they'll set up a playlist to play throughout the night. So this is where you could set that up, the time of day, and this is going to say which preset. So we could say our showcast preset will go from, you know, whatever time we want it to repeat and the days of the week. So that's where you can save different rules and enable the scheduler. So now, we, what's missing in this transmitter is we don't have an Orban and sidecard in this one. So what I'm going to do is jump over to an NV10 Lite, which we actually have operating in Quincy as well, but it has an Orban and sidecard in it. So this is the Orban and side view. So you do have to control and set all of your parameters for the Orban and sidecard through the AUI. You can't do it from the front screen of the transmitter. And this is where you can see these are your different options. You can load a, a factory setting on the Orban card or create a user-defined preset. You can load that. Now you can also make adjustments and see how they're affecting your sound through this control function here. Now, because we didn't see in the presets where this was, in our other settings, might be hard to remember, but we didn't have the Orban processor uh, show up in the last one because it wasn't inside the transmitter. So if we enable that, it's just simply going to ask us to pick which Orban preset we want associated with this preset, and that's how it will work. So with that, that's really, you know, we just wanted to do a quick cover today of the AUI, and I'll just go back here. Now, as I said, there's no special software that you have to download on your computer. You can access the AUI from any web-enabled device. So this is an Android phone showing the AUI and also an Apple uh, iPhone. 
So there doesn't seem to be any questions at this time, but if there are any questions, please feel free to contact me and stay in touch with Nautel. We get a Nautel Waves newsletter, various webinars, there's a YouTube page, Facebook. So check us out and thank you for joining us today.